Most of you probably remember the iconic 1980s movie Back to the Future. In the movie, Marty McFly travels back in time to the 1950s and he accidentally changes the course of his own life. In the sequel, he travels to the future of 2015. I remember as a kid, I was amazed by the idea of throwing a glance into the future. And maybe that was a prediction that I was going to end up working with future studies. However, predictions are difficult, especially about the future. That's how an old Danish saying goes. But what I hope you take away from this presentation is that the future is not quite as unpredictable, not quite as uncertain as many of us think it is. When I'm talking about the future, I'm basically talking about knowledge, about what trends will either intensify and become mainstream or fade away. So I'm not talking about prophecies that are written in stone and destined to become true. I'm not a fortune teller, and I don't have a crystal ball, unfortunately. The future I'm working with and talking about is probably best explained with the William Gibson quote. The quote goes, the future is already here, it's just not very evenly distributed. To put it another way, the changes that we, us in this room, are going to face in the coming years, they're most likely already happening somewhere else on Earth. So by being extremely observant of change, maybe on a global scale, we could make much better decisions, and we could react much better to change. And if you hang on, I'm going to give you four concrete examples of change that I see coming our way. But first, when working with the future, uh, one of the biggest issues is a lack of universal language and concepts and tools. But tools and concepts do exist, and they can help increase future's literacy or knowledge about the future. And I'm going to introduce you to a couple of them. The first one is called megatrends. That's basically just uh, huge changes, such as aging and urbanization. Aging means that the world and the population is on average going to become older. We're going to have more older citizens than younger. Urbanization means that we are most likely to continue to pursue, pursue an urban life because we've been doing this for centuries. So megatrends can help us adapt very concrete things, such as our retirement systems and our cities, to an older and more urban population in the future. So the megatrends, they create a framework for the future and they create um, a bigger picture. So there's another tool that I work with that is very good at spotting the smaller things, very good at adding details to the bigger picture. It's called the horizon scanning method. And what this method does is observe uh, changes in human behavior, often human reaction to megatrends. So horizon scanning it's not difficult to learn. It's simply a structured way of scanning your horizon. So it's basically systematic surveillance of so-called weak signals of change that signals when a trend is either about to emerge or become widespread. 
but mainly it's about having a future-oriented mindset and always asking, what does this change mean? And then it's about having a group of people spread around the world using the same structured template to make the observation on their horizon in their daily life. And if we're lucky, we're going to have several observations of the same things happening in different places. All of these observations should be uploaded to a database. And actually, my day job is building such a database. My colleagues and I run a global scanning network. We have almost 200 people around the world of different age and nationality and background. We have people in Bangladesh and Nigeria and Toronto and Oslo and several here in Copenhagen. And I think there might be some here in this room. So these people, the newcomers to the network, they upload three to five observations per week using the same structured template we agreed on. And then we all try to connect the dots and find patterns. There are other networks out there doing the same thing. And I believe that these networks are extremely underutilized sources of knowledge. But back to the observations, they're simply, as I said, observation of human reaction to bigger changes. But let me give you my examples from the future. The first one is, I don't know about you, but this summer here in Copenhagen, I saw them everywhere. The electric scooters, right? We saw how they changed, how everybody got around the city, and it it changed how we used the city, a lot of us, at least. What I also saw was how angry people got when they were tripping over the scooters that were just left everywhere, on pavements and public places. However, the scooters and the challenges they brought with them was already reported on in the summer of 2018, because it was happening in Paris and Sao Paulo and Mexico City. So that should have been an early warning for Copenhageners about what challenges the scooters would bring with them, and we could have reacted better with regulation before they arrived. So my other example from the future. Who do you guys think are the future group of criminals? It's the elderly. <laughs> yeah. In Japan and in South Korea, a lot of older citizens have a hard time making ends meet. And at the same time, they're lonely. What they do is they commit petty theft and shoplifting. And they do this so they can get thrown in prison because in prison they can experience a comfortable bed, regular meals, but most importantly, someone to talk to and a sense of community, even though it's prison. And the rest of the world also experiencing challenges such as urbanization and an older population. We know this due to the framework of the megatrends. So maybe the elderly crime wave in Japan and South Korea could be an early warning for us to adapting and maybe start fighting loneliness among the older citizens. All right, so who do you think are the potential new consumers? It's our pets. Actually, we know this because it's already happening. Dogs are going shopping, and soon cats will too. It's happening in, in Brazil, where a pet shop chain spelled pets, uh, spelled with a C, uh, has launched an online store called Pet Commerce, where they use advanced AI and facial recognition technology to judge a dog's reaction to a toy, a video of a toy. 
So they measure the position of the dog's ears and, it, and the position of the mouth. And if the dog likes the toy, it's added to a cart for the owner to approve later. <laughs> so now pets are the one to do your marketing for. And this potential new trend is supported by another observation from Finland, where a group of scientists are working on something they call an internet for lonely animals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so what's happening is a lot of animals, a lot of pets, are left at home for many hours during the day while their humans go to work. And this affects their mental health. So the scientists are working on an interface that is going to enable dog-to-dog -dog communication. <laughs> so pets as consumers and pets' mental health, they're new topics, but now we're already talking about them. My last example from the future, it's from India, where a proposed drone ecosystem would potentially normalize and legalize drone use maybe a decade before we're going to see it here in Copenhagen. This means that we actually get to observe how people behave around drones. So will people have slingshots? Will they shoot down the drones before, because they think they are annoying or because they want the pizza is delivering? Now, how the, how the drone company is going to react to this? Will they put flamethrowers on drones? Also, are we going to see real estate ads that claim this is a very nice area, very little drone noise pollution? It's fascinating, I think, to look at these examples of human reaction to change from around the world. Of course, Human behavior is also culturally, de culturally dependent, and it's not 100% transferable from India to Denmark, but it's the best we got. And the database that I'm working on has more than 5,000 entries now, comprised over five years, and I think it's close to becoming almost an encyclopedia of the future that we are going to face, our future. So, my final message to you. It is that human behavior is predictable. And the world has mapped the past. I believe we should at least try to map the future too. Or at least we should take direction from the change that we can already see coming. I also believe that companies and politicians and individuals could make much better decisions if we look at the changes already happening. So what I want you to do, all of you, when you leave here, I want you to be much better at noticing the small signals of change that are present everywhere. When you read the morning news, when you go to the gym or talk to your best friend, ask the questions. What is new around the world? And is it coming our way? Adopt a future-oriented mindset. It's not difficult. You just have to remember where and how to look. And now you know.